Hey, how's it going? Welcome from Thailand, from Bangkok. It is so hot. These are great. And they're like a dollar twenty Australian, so 35 baht. Mm. So good, and they prepare them fresh as well. They literally just chop the top off of them, which is great. So I've been here in Bangkok now for three days, four days, since Sunday. So I arrived on Sunday, it's now Thursday. So I fly out at 6 o'clock, 6.30 p.m. tonight, and I have not done much in the way of exercise, but I have done a lot of walking. So I've done maybe 30 to 40, maybe 50,000 steps a day, which is quite a bit. Uh, but I have been putting on the kilos, eating a lot of really good food, a lot of curries, a fair bit of alcohol and drink, and just really just enjoying myself for this week, which is really nice. Unfortunately, it's been a bit concerning throughout the week, uh, with this whole coronavirus uh, thing and Australia is they decided this week to make an announcement after announcement after announcement so after I flew out on the Sunday they then changed it so that uh, they said do not fly and to make sure to try and get everyone home as fast as possible and one of the most annoying parts of the announcements was on Sunday when they said that every person who has been overseas arriving from Monday onwards must self-isolate for 14 days at home. So that means that when I get back into Australia, I have to go straight home and I have to stay in the house for 14 days. I'm not allowed to leave. Anyway, that's what's happening when I get back to Australia. This week in Thailand has been absolutely amazing. Been a lot of walking, as I said, a lot of seeing a lot of sights, all different temples, Wat Aran, Wat Pha, uh, the Emerald Buddha Temple. And at Wat Aran, I actually got blessed. There was a monk who put a yellow thing around my uh, wrist and splashed me with some water and gave me uh, three blessings. That was really nice. As I've said, I've been eating a lot of food as well, so there's a lot of street food all over the place, um, which is really good food. So, for instance, got myself some pork on a stick. This is like a dollar, so that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes good too. I've been here this week with my dad, so we've been spending time together um, and just yeah, having a bit of a holiday together, which is great. We did a bus tour. We went to the railway market. So the Maeklong railway market. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing everything. 
uh, the Meikong Railway Market, where it's actually a market on the railway. They built the railway along the path of the market, but the market was already there, so they refused to move. And uh, yeah, so every day, eight times a day, a train goes through the market and they roll all the stalls back and then watch the train go and then roll the stalls back out again. And the train comes really close. Like the shops, you've only, there's only maybe only one meter, not even a meter, like only like maybe half a meter between where the train is running and the actual shop walls. So if you're there, um, you need to be standing like right up against the wall. So it's kind of crazy. <laughs> That was a really fun day. And then we also went to the floating markets, which is a bit touristy, but I found it quite nice. You get on these boats and you go float through the markets and um, they try and sell you things. We didn't buy anything. It's, there is actually a bit of a breeze which is really nice so it feels a little cooler because of that but the Sun seems a bit hotter and now it's about time where I'm gonna have to start heading back to the airport let's hope there's no problems with getting through the airport and getting back to Australia and at the moment everyone if any one of you is overseas or needs to get home try and get home sooner rather than later um, as a lot of borders being closed at the moment due to this virus that's going around so try and get home as quickly as possible. Can't urge that enough. If you leave it too late, it could be potential that you're stuck and you can't fly out. Okay. Uh, boarding pass and passport. Thank yep. you. Up in the cab. So part of the new screening at the airport, they test your temperature and give you a little sticker if you're all okay. <laughs> landed in Australia they've got significant additional security and biosecurity things got to fill out these forms the self-isolation uh, yeah it's all a bit crazy and I'm not allowed to film any government officials so I can't take you through whatever's on the other side of that immigration yeah. We're back in Australia. Yeah, mate. How do you feel then? It's me back. Well, I, I, I'm just relieved. 
<laughs> absolutely relieved. Yeah. When we get back. Yeah. And I'm back. Well, that was fun. Uh, the airport wasn't actually that bad. There wasn't that many extra security measures. There was just those little uh, sheets that I had to fill out and the sheet we had to read. Um, a lot of advice throughout the whole process that make sure you're doing your self-isolation. A couple of extra security people here and there. Uh, I didn't notice a temperature check zone, but I'm pretty sure there must have been. And that's about it. And so now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do during my mandatory 14-day self-isolation. Um, of course, I'm still going to work. I'm going to be working from home. So my daytime activities as per normal, but just from home. Um, I also have a trainer, so I can put my bike on the bike trainer, maybe do some rides that way. Also weights. Uh, I can also uh, do things on the stairs, such as elevated calf raises. And when they talk about self-isolation, what does that actually mean? Um, it's a little ambiguous. So according to some sources, uh, it means you stay around your house. If you're in shared or common areas, um, you just make sure that you don't cough or sneeze. Or if you are sick, then you should be wearing a surgical mask, that sort of thing. And then another source says that you can go as far as actually going out and doing a walk or exercise, so long as you're wearing a mask. Um, just making sure you don't go into public places where there's a lot of other public around. And that is part of the New South Wales government website. So I'm going to definitely run with that advice and literally go for a run. But I've got to make sure that I go for runs in areas which are not crowded. So make sure that it's an empty space. And trail running is especially good for that because there's usually not that many people around on trail runs. And if you are out doing exercise or something like that, you just got to make sure that you don't touch anything. But if I were to have any symptoms, then yes, I would need to be 100% at home and not touching anything to stay in my room. And the point of the masks, of course, is not uh, where you are trying to stop getting infected by others. They don't really do that very well. What they do do is they stop uh, waterborne particles from coming out of your mouth and your nose and going onto other surfaces. They also stop you from touching your face. Touching your face is the biggest transmitter of your particles to elsewhere and elsewhere particles to you. And of course the biggest piece of advice is soap and water. Uh, not hand sanitizer, soap and water. And preferably not even liquid soap, like a solid bar of soap and water is your best bet. Um, to making sure that you keep yourself as clean as possible. What that does is the soap breaks down the fats and it uses the surfactants and pulls away the fats and greases from what's on your hands and flushes them down the drain. The virus and other viruses and bacteria, they live within the fats that are accumulating on your hands. So if you are removing those fats, then you are getting rid of whatever virus causing fats and pieces and particles are on your hands. And that's why there's this massive push to do at least 20 seconds of hand cleaning every time you clean your hands. And to limit your exposure to other people, you shouldn't be going to public places such as shops or schools or work or something like that. Other places where there's lots of people around you, especially where it's an enclosed environment. So get family or friends to do the shopping for you, deliver it to you, or get shopping delivery, or just um, order Uber Eats a lot, something like that. In the home, you'll want to separate yourself from others. So I'm not gonna use the downstairs area. I'm gonna be using my upstairs living area throughout this whole 14 days. The house that I live in is split into two halves. So there's the downstairs area where there's a bathroom, kitchen, living area. I'll have to use the kitchen, but I do have my own bathroom and I've got my own little upstairs area where I live. So. I'm separated, which is quite lucky. And also just in regards to the masks on another part of the government website, it says that if you don't have access to masks and you need to be outside, then you just need to make sure that you don't cough or sneeze on people. And these masks are really bad to breathe through. They're really hard to actually breathe through. They cause a lot of sweating on your face. Anyway, if you are outdoors and you're doing your exercise, try not to keep it to be too long. You don't want to be in public too long or potentially putting yourself around other people. So try and keep it to isolated style exercises where possible. So as long as you're responsible with what you do, you limit touching things, uh, maybe even bring your own water 
rather than going to bubblers or whatever it is along the run and severely limit being around other people, then you will not be breaking any rules, you'll not be liable for any fines, you'll be okay. And you can still do your exercise outdoors. I'll leave links in the description box below where you can find out more information about how to do self-isolation within the New South Wales state within Australia. Every other state and every other country, you will likely have some slightly different rules. That about does it for me. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run content every week from here in Australia and sometimes overseas as well, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.